the egg cannot come before the chicken. The chicken has to be there first in order to lay it. It has to mate. Hold up. This is a riddle that most people try to solve. Mm. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Now, no one was able to answer this until I came across Panda Babianun's mm. answer to it. Most people think that it has to be a choice between those two things. You see, so that means you can't think of anything yeah. outside of that. That's the problem because the chicken comes from the dinosaur, dinosaur. Yeah. and the dinosaur pre-existed. Mm. So it's not, it doesn't make sense when you say what came first, the chicken or the egg, mm. when the chicken itself comes from the dinosaur. dinosaur yeah. And you look at a chicken, look at its structure, look at its feet, look at, it's just a miniature version. Okay, so we're here just about to watch the Joe Rogan experience with Terence Howard. Haven't seen any of it, so looking forward to, um, yeah, giving our reaction and comments or, you know, whatever. Yeah, someone sent me a, a link as well, so yeah, I'm going to find this um, find this interesting and see what he's got to say. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out! The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day! How did you get started with all this? I didn't come into this world the way everybody else does, I don't think. I used to think that everybody had the similar experience, but like if I asked you, what was your first memory in life? What would it be? I don't think I know. My first memory was almost like when you're dreaming and you're falling and you hit the bottom and you wake up. Mm -hmm. That was my first memory, but I didn't wake up here. I was inside my mother's womb. And I was about maybe six months inside the womb. And I'm like, okay, don't forget, I'm here. Okay, okay. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. You go to sleep, you wake up again. Now something's moving in front of you. And you're like, oh, that's my friend. But I had a different name for it. I didn't know it was my hand. But I knew I had a title for it. Go back to sleep, all of those things. Then ultimately you get ready to come out. I remember all of that. Do you remember coming out? Remember being compressed, you know, and there's, you want to panic, but there's, you're flooded with like some serotonin and dopamine to where you feel relaxed, you go right back to sleep. You remember being born, I remember being circumcised, I remember the whole nine and the proof of it was when my wife Mira that you just met, when she was six months pregnant with my son, Kieran, I wanted to prove to her what I was talking about. So I put a light on her stomach every day at six o'clock at night. And I would move that light back and forth and I put a song on for a week straight. On Saturday, after a week, I didn't put the light there and I didn't do the music. And he pushed up on her stomach. And then when I put the light... Yeah, so far we, we um, I'm in alignment with what he's saying. Mm. Um, that's part of the reason I want to watch this because we've been kind of talking about him and how what he says relates to what the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York has written. Um, as you know, we break down that three months before what people know to be conception, like everyone thinks it's nine months, they're in the, the womb of their mum and then they come out. But we say that they, they're actually like three months before that and when you come out, you're 12 months, yeah. not nine. So what he's talking about here is like, okay, this is what's happening where you're remembering things before you, you, know, before you came out or before you come out. So, so far, so good, so yeah. interesting. He started following the line. And for the next two months, we did this every night and he would go all the way around her belly, back and forth, always pushing on it. You know, I didn't understand at the time that maybe I've interfered with the development process and maybe he's wrapped the cord around his neck. I shouldn't have done all of this, but it came out wonderful and fine. And this little boy, First thing he wanted to do is see light. He loved lights from that early stage. And I can ask him the square root of two, the square root of five, the square root of that, the square root of pi, the square, and he will run it off. 
running off, but he's just like, his personality is like Forrest Gump, you know, <laughs> to where he's just loving and wants everybody to be around him and, and, and care. Um, but for me, that's where it started, in there. And then when I was about five years old, um, I had another dream. And this, the room filled up with like this fluid, a dark fluid. And I could see the ripples of it moving around. And there was a being there. And I remember being walked through that fluid with him. And I was trying to look up at him and I couldn't turn my head to look at him. And he had his hand straight. I knew his voice. But I did not know who, he, who it was, but I felt confident and comfortable. And as we moved along this dark blue fluid path um, with like chartreuse covering the, uh, you know, when you look into a pool and you see the ripples. And if you're at the bottom of the pool, you see the ripples overlapping. That's what it looked like. And then when we got to the end of it, he said to me, if you could have anything in the world, what would it be? Now, we were really poor. <clears throat> My dad had just gotten out of prison, you know, for manslaughter. I didn't have much, but I said to him, I want to know how everything works. And at that moment, he used his left hand and he opened up the door. And there was this mansion, big brown doors. And inside of it was this crystalline flowers big crystalline flowers, like a giant, like five feet across. And every time I tried to see his face, he would reach in and hand me another shape. And I was so fascinated with the shapes because they didn't look like the platonic solids. They didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. And he would hand me these shapes and each shape was different and amazing. And I woke up from that dream. But after that moment, anytime something strange would happen in a dream, I had the powers of inception. Anytime something, I would be naked at school, I would say, I'm not naked. I must be dreaming. And immediately, I would run out of the school or run out of wherever I was, and I would find that mansion again. And I had access to all the knowledge. The proof of it is the 97 patents that I have now. So you know how he just said about Inception. I was talking about clairvoyance and stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. but the Inception is, because there's oh, a yeah. movie called Inception yeah, 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 that yeah, shows yeah. you exactly like yeah. how you, in the dream state, you're like in a dream, within a dream, within a dream, dream, within yeah. a dream, and then yeah. you're also interacting with people that are in their dreams, but mm -hmm. you're obviously in the same kind of environment or whatever with them. So that's kind of What did the master just say that? How do you know you're not dreaming? Yeah, you pinch yourself. Mm. And he just said, that he would tell himself that, you know, he's not, and then he will kind of like wake up or like come out of it. So you can actually speak and interact and tell yourself things during that mm. sleep state calling dream when you're really traveling. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. The proof of it is the industries that I've innovated. It's like waking up, having a dream that you have a diamond in your hand and out of nowhere, you wake up and you're hoping you're holding it and you try and hold it and it's gone when you wake up. But the proof is all the stuff that I've been able to do now. So these, all these <coughs> thoughts, these thoughts are from the time you were a baby. These are not things that you've learned. These are things that you had in your mind from the time you were born. From before that time, because mm -hmm. I remembered that I had been someplace else before. Now what's interesting, that voice that I heard, that's my voice now. So it was like my greater self mm. was leading me through and periodically again, would is, show up again. You see, like, and, this is what we talk about with right. the doctrine when we say that you, you have a counter, your counter, mm. um, counterpart, yeah, your counterpart that is you but in another realm. So you can receive messages and interact with mm. yourself, yeah, so that's interesting again their dreams and I went off and became an actor because my mother wanted my little brother to be an actor and I thought if I became an actor you know I would get my mother's affection it wasn't until my mother was dying and I'm talking to her and 
she told me the reason that she was babying Antonio was because he had asthma. And my father always had questioned whether it was his son or not because he looked so much like her family and didn't look so much like him. And I realized, my God, if I had followed my proper course, I could have saved my mother because the knowledge that I had, mm -hmm. you know, I had the, the grand unified field equation. It's funny, again, this is, this is what we're trying to say, like, if... Imagine you were taught these sciences mm. from the time you were born oh, as yeah. a child, um, how far more your brain will be active and what you'd use. So we, we see what they call prodigies, young prodigies, young people that can play the piano, or play, mm. you know, do some amazing things. And you think, wow, and you see it more and more now and on TikTok and on social oh, media. Yeah. But you see little young boys playing like the guitar or whatever. So again, it's like school dumbs you down, isn't it? Because they make, they slow you down because like to, to say the alphabet, it's like you go to schools and sometimes they're proud when they have, you know, the end of year sh and they say like, get the children to show what they've learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just about able to kind of like do nursery, yeah. nursery rhymes <laughs> yeah. or something. It's like, yeah, come on, we could do better than that. Already put that together and at, at seven, eight, I was working with these things and then I went through all of the hell that I had to go through being accused of domestic violence, all of those things. And I thought it was a curse at the time, mm -hmm. but it was really removing me from advancing down the wrong path. And during that period of time, I started waking up in my dreams again. And I started going back into that, that palace. And I remembered all of these things and I started patenting them. As I moved along, I got in touch with um, Michael Hudak, he was the president of the University of Science and Philosophy because I was studying um, a guy named John Keeley, you know, who had worked with frequency back in the 1870s, had built the first, um, the first, uh, what do they call it, uh, self-sustaining engine um, back in 1872, but he wouldn't tell people how he built it. And I was watching a program with, with Del Pons, who was, and somebody in the audience said, doesn't John Keeley's work remind you a lot of Walter Russell? And a bell went on. And so I got in touch with the University of Science and Philosophy after watching some stuff about Walter Russell. And, and, um, and uh, Michael Hudak, you know, took me under his wing and started talking to me. But he was more into the philosophy and the love that Walter was talking about. But I, my intention was to rebuild the periodic table, you know, build a new periodic table, because the stuff I had learned in, in college, you know, I went to school for chemical engineering the first year over at Pratt. And they, at the time, I think it was like 108 elements. And I asked, I told the teacher, um, the professor, about um, the relationship between hydrogen on the spectrometer and carbon and silicon and cobalt. And I was like, it's the same exact color, same tone, just doubled in each octave. And he was like, no, each element is the same element and it will always be that element. And I was like, you don't see the relationship. So I left school and I was going to spend 40 years rebuilding the periodic table. And I found out that Walter Russell had already did that. And he did it based upon the natural curvature of everything. And when you say rebuild the periodic table, what do you mean specifically? Well, the way the periodic table is laid out, the, the periodic table they have now, Let's see it, looks, it looks like a Pull box. Image of it. it looks like a straight box. Mm -hmm. And they don't show the relationship that between every element, there's between every, there's two no, the, All right, here's the periodic table. Yeah. You'll yeah. see hydrogen the sitting the book, all the way over book, there by itself, <laughs> the but they one. don't show that hydrogen has the same tone as, as carbon. What do you mean by tone? Same tone, ki same key of E. Mm. Same key of E. 40.5 hertz, the next one would be like um, 81 hertz. You go to silicone, it will double up and would be 162 hertz. You'll go to, to, to cobalt and it'll be 324 hertz. It's, you know in that base, if you were to take the angles of incidence or the tones that they create, you know, their color, like you can mm -hmm. turn color back into sound, 
based upon <laughs> this is exactly what we it's teach, the same it? wavelength. It's, it's just like, it's like listening to ourselves because like you say, we deal with the tones, vibrations, frequencies and, frequencies, yeah. and uh, FAC in terms yeah. of the right vibrations and what he's saying is like the, the notes, the eight notes, um, and then those are octaves, and then they just repeat and repeat, mm. but just like in the different octaves. So, yeah, in line. Yeah. It's long or much longer. So all you have to do is keep dividing light by two. Keep that up, Jimmy. You keep dividing light by two, and you'll ultimately get back to the audible sound of it because there was a relationship between light and color, sound and tone, matter and shape. I put, um, I, I sent over yeah. Walter Russell's. I was trying to get to that, that's what. Yeah, mm. it's, it's Walter Russell's periodic table that he put together. Now you compare that to what we, Mendeleev, Mendeleev's periodic table. You'll compare Walter Russell's to it, and you'll see something completely different. It's unwinding. Whoa. Mm. It's unwinding. Mm. It's and you like see the, there's a relationship you can see that... The, you can see the helix in it, like mm. the, from the DNA structure yeah. right there, yeah. Hydrogen. So you, you had figured this out at a young age? I had already seen this. This was, this was all inside of... This was all inside of that palace. I had access to it, and I knew the so relationship. So you saw this in dreams? I saw it as a circle. Everything was a full circle laid out, and each area was just expanding, like wrapping uh, a rag around your hand. The first wrap, you know, it's so tight. The very first wrap is so tight. That's the first one that Walter Russell did, yeah. But go back to the, um, the wiggly one. This is how I saw it more so, but as a vortex. But you'll see there's a relationship between hydrogen, carbon, silicone, cobalt, rhodium. They're all bonded. They're all sit be as the middle point between two noble gases. So those things don't really exist. It's only one substance. Now the problem is the first thing that we're able to perceive is hydrogen. Mm. That's the mm. first visible element. Just because again, before like, it is like the, the, the sound isn't in light. You've got just a particular um, uh, frequency that you yeah. can see, um, which is what, between 400 to like 600, 700 yeah, nanometers. nanometers. So again, it, the sound is limited to what you can hear because mm. we know the dogs obviously yeah. hear beyond what we hear. But yeah, he's, he's in alignment. He's in alignment. Dense for us to perceive it. You understand what I'm okay. saying? Okay. But as you reach into the next octave, the carbon octave, and they call that the a bisexual tone because the carbon has two tones to it. It has a negative side and a positive side. The part where lithium behaves, lithium is a is contractive. Beryllium is contractive. Boron is contractive, but the moment you get to carbon, you balance it out. It gets to a perfect balance of plus and minus four. So it's a double tone. Then nitrogen is minus three, one, minus three. Oxygen is minus two. Fluorine is minus one. Now the balance of this, all of those are mates. Fluorine and lithium naturally mate. If you have lithium bonded with any other element, the moment that fluorine is introduced, it will break all bonds mm -hmm. violently so it can bond with fluorine. Same thing with beryllium and oxygen. That's why it said, and what they've tried to keep from us, if you have, you want to break water into its component parts of hydrogen and oxygen, all you have to do is introduce beryllium or the sound of beryllium. And, and oxygen will violently break away from any other thing, even hydrogen, to bond with that beryllium. And now you can have, it just if, with the frequency of it, and since the hydrogen is smaller, hydrogen will, that waveform, you can send that up into one tube, the oxygen into another tube, without using electrolysis, without using heat, it was just through frequency and the proof of it, if you go back up just a little bit higher, we know the relationship between sodium and chlorine. 
they're equal and opposite mates. If you get out of the pool and you got chlorine and you're itching from the chlorine, all you have to do is get some real salt and rub that on your skin and it'll turn right into an oil. It naturally neutralizes each other. So everything has an equal and opposite mate. The, the lithium becomes sodium in the next octave, doubles the same exact tone, just doubled and, and wider. The sodium becomes potassium in the next octave, widens up. The reason that arsenic kills us is because our DNA has nitrogen and it has phosphorus in it because nitrogen unwinds into the next octave right mm -hmm. after silicon and becomes phosphorus. Our DNA has both of those in there, but it's going by tone. So the moment arsenic, which sits as a minus three on the next octave, the moment arsenic is introduced, the body thinks that, oh, this is my thing that I need. Mm -hmm. And it tries to wrap itself around the arsenic, but it causes the DNA to unravel because it's four times as large as that nitrogen was. And those other little elements, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, magnese, and, and iron, all of those, those aren't true elements. Those are isotopes. Mm -hmm. Those things, those first three, are the full tones, they make full spheres. But now it becomes elliptical with titanium, vanadium, and chromium. And on the other side, it's like when, like I said, if you wrap the rag around your hand, the first wrap, really tight, you can't get much out of it. Second wrap, you damn near can't see the difference of it. Third one, you start, you start seeing hydrogen. The fourth wrap, you see carbon. I need a piece of paper or a rag and I can show you that twist. But in between each one of them, by the time you get, nature does not allow us in the silicone octave for there to expand out. But there is the same titanium, vanadium, chromium, magnese, and iron that exists between aluminum and silicone. But nature doesn't allow us to unravel that. But now with the wave conjugations, we can. We couldn't do that before because we didn't know the angles of incidence that were necessary to open these things up. And you couldn't do that with the platonic solids because the platonic solids were averages and approximations. So he's talking about they, the different, uh, the, like, at, at the time when they, were, they didn't have um, the right instrument to detect these different frequencies mm. and vibrations. Yeah. But also what's is important is like how you can things that naturally bond together mm. and how you can unbond them and the fact that you can mix different things if mm. you don't know what you're doing and literally kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's important to know yeah. which elements can mix with... Tone, sounds, frequencies, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he said <laughs> you can do that with just sound and mm. frequency, so... All right. Mm. said a number of times, you show me a real straight line in nature. If everything in the nature, if everything in the universe... Everything is expressed in motion. All motion expressed in waves. All waves were curved. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the greater the action, the greater the reaction. The greater the reaction, the greater the resistance. The greater the resistance, the greater the curvature. Because the universe is based off of equanimity, which Einstein left out in his theory of relativity, the balancing side of the gravity, gravity was caused by electric force, electricity is always seeking a higher pressure condition. It spins northeast, it's trying to get to the center of an area, mm. the center of a cone. But the next electric wave is coming, so it gets pushed out, and as it's pushed out, it gets to the vortices. And that's some of, on those pieces, those vortices. Now, instead of it spinning northeasternly, centripetally, it's forced to spin centrifugally, mm. and it spins southwest. And this is dealing with... Um, and it centrifugal and centripetal mm. forces of nature that one is pushing, one is pulling, and this is dealing with that science of magnetism again that... Man for planet risk, innit? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. man for planet risk goes into this. Mm -hmm. It itself out, it decays, it keeps decaying until you get four magnetic waves that hit each other at 120 degree angles. At that point, they reconvert back into the electric field, and then they make their way back to their source again. 
whether it's the star, whatever star it came into, what happens when we get older? We expand at our equator, right? We get shorter mm -hmm. at the top. Why? Because the electric force is pushing in and condensing, and the magnetism expands out at the equator. The, the electron field, the electrons, that's just discharged electricity, devitalized electricity coming from the sun, coming from the earth. It's the waste product from it. But it hits our magnetic field, and then it gets pulled right back in and gets compressed again, and now it becomes electricity for the earth, and then it pushes itself right back out again at the equator. The equator is five miles wider than the, than the poles. Electricity... Einstein left that out of his equation because he coupled electricity and magnetism together and didn't realize that electricity was the equal and opposite of magnetism. Mm. Electricity being... Yeah, that's, that's very interesting because, like, people um, think that, you know, like we say, magnets, it's, it's not the metal, it's, it's the... Um, how does the master teacher put it? It's like magnetism is... Oh. Pool, pool of positive and negative currency? Yeah, it, it is, but um, I'll, I'll come back to that. It's, it's, it's gone. Uh, it's gone. The contractive field, you breathe in, that's a contractive thing. You breathe out, that's, that's a magnetic thing, a radiative thing. But they use the term magnet as an attractor, but to magnify something means to what? Make it larger, increase mm -hmm. the space. That's the work of radiation. That's what Walter Russell was talking about all those years. That's the work of radiation. It's the electricity between the things that pull them together. The Coulomb force that supposedly opposites attract and push each other away. If that was true, then hot air and cold air would seek each other out. They're the same substance, but just under a, but in a different state. One is... They move in opposite directions from each other. Hot water and cold water move in opposite directions from each other. The reason two magnets seem like they're, the North Pole is attracted to the South Pole because if you had two rivers or two holes, two hoses with water coming out of them and you pointed them at each other, what are they going to do? They're going to be pushing against each other. But they align to where the male enters the female and is able to come out. So they've been fooled by their senses. They've been fooled by their eyes and, and, and have missed the whole picture of it. Are you familiar with um, Khalil Gibran? Yes. He wrote a book. He wrote The Prophet, you know, 1923. Oh, yeah, the prophet, but he wrote remember, another book. Khalil Jabil, that's what he's talking about, mm. The Prophet, which the master um, told us to read many, many years ago. He wrote, and other people then wrote about it. But, yeah, Khalil Jabil, that's what he's just mentioned. Okay. But let, let's hear what he's saying um, about sand it. Sand and foam. In that book, he told a story of a man who had been away from his family for four months working, and he was excited to come home. And as he was coming home, he knew that the mountain, when he saw the mountain, that he would be able, he was close to home. So his five senses started having a conversation, and his eyes says, I see a mountain, I see a mountain, I see a mountain. And so the ears perked out and said, I don't hear a mountain. The nose sniffed and said, I don't smell a not mountain. The tongue tasted the air. I don't taste a mountain. And the other four sentence, senses started speaking among themselves, and they came to the conclusion that there must be something the matter with the eye because they <laughs> couldn't perceive it. But all of these things, we've been misled just because we've been fooled by our senses, our mm. eyes see point zero five percent of the entire electromagnetic wave. Mm -hmm. We're blind cosmically, but we judge everything by what we see. Mm. And they've done that with science for so many years. You look at E equals M C squared. That talks about ex expansion. It doesn't. It does not show how it's divided. If ever you've never breathed in twice without breathing out, you breathe in and you breathe out, you charge and you discharge. There's no, so how is it that the breathing in, they're acting as if 
the universe is just expanding out, expanding out, breathing out, breathing out, and it's going to dissipate out, and they never include the contractive side of it breathing in because they were misled by Newton, hmm. who said everything moves in a straight line unless affected by something else. And we know that not to be true. But they built the entire two-dimensional plane, the Euclidean space that we live on, that we work on, that we try and define curved nature by two-dimensional space, and we never include the curvature, the breathing in. Like um, Alan Watts said, um, no one would be attracted to a Euclidean woman <laughs> because she would just be straight. Oh, All straight that's lines. funny, it's the, yeah. It's that's the wiggliness, so real. it's the curvature. That's, that's, that's funny, but you know what is funny, yeah? I remember years ago, um, Certain women used to have flat bottoms and mm. they didn't have no bottom. It was just like a plank. Carpenter's and, dream. Yeah, and now it's like everyone's twerking and like there's so much attention on that area of the body now yeah. because of, and the people are putting silicone and all that mm. because, because of the curves. The curve, yeah. Everyone likes the curves. You, yeah, you definitely don't want a, a flat, straight, yeah, female. <laughs> I don't. Damn, I don't no, know no, about no, you. No, no. <laughs> figure eight, man. <laughs> figure eight, figure eight and that. Yeah, the shapes, the shapes. The, the ele funny. electric side and the magnetic side. I, I can talk about it, but I can show you even better. If you can... Um, can, I, can I stop you there? This, the, the concept of the periodic table, the way the periodic table conventionally is addressed, uh, do they address sorry. these things as being isolated or intertwined? They interact, but they feel that carbon sorry. will always be carbon and it will have its half-life and it's and it's and keep breaking down but it still be carbon they don't understand that it unwinds and becomes nitrogen oh. nitrogen unwinds and becomes oxygen so this the periodic table that is the conventional use of the periodic table and what is this other gentleman's name again walter russell walter russell walter russell's version of the periodic table how is Walter Russell's version of the periodic table perceived by people who study this? Well, now everyone wants to use it. If you can go to my, in my book, there's a, there's a picture of Einstein reading Walter Russell's first book, um, second book, The Universal One. Because when Walter wrote this in 1926, he sent it out to, all, to 300 different universities and physicists. And one of the quotes that Walter Russell, that um, Einstein says on his deathbed, I should have spent more time reading Walter Russell's work. That's how, and now they're taking it under their wing, but remember the Michelson-Morley experiment from 1887. They're, it, they were trying to prove whether there was an ether or an effect of an ether well, the there you the go. Yeah, what more can we say here? Nine ether. For those people that say there's no ether, but we're going to hear what he's got to say about it. Nine mm -hmm. ether, six <laughs> ether. It's all ether. Let's hear this. From that used to be called the the fifth element. That everything in that from antiquity, everyone understood that nothing just something doesn't come out of nothing. Mm. It's like when you look at the air, it looks clear but you change the pressure condition. The balance of the change of pressure condition, we call that condensation. It creates clouds. And you change the motion conditions, whether it's moving quickly or slowly, it's going to become snow, it's going to become rain, it's going to become hell. So everything comes down to just one of two forces. Either you're breathing in and filling up something or you're pouring it out. But the scientists, they ignored Walter Russell's work because he didn't include any equa equations inside of it. He, he talked philosophically mm. regarding how things behave in comparison to laying down and following some Newtonian or calculus writing. You know, he said he based things based on let's explore them naturally. And that's what I did with my book once. What... Walter Russell was missing, he didn't have the wave conjugations. He didn't have the, the mirror shapes, the all shapes. And that was because of a mistake that was made 6,000 years ago, maybe. They took the flower of life, which was that symbol, 
Mm-hmm. Um, if you could go to my book, tcotlc.com, there's a, an example that I put in there. 6,000 years ago. No coincidence, eh? That we talk about. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the creation of the, mm-hmm. the Adamites, Adamites yeah, yep. 6,000 years ago, where they started to name everything and change things and what we know today to be. But yeah, let's keep listening. And I show the period, I show the element, the fundamentals. If you could possibly pull that up, Jamie. Where's that.com again, TCLT? TCOTLC.com. You'll see in there the mistake that they made because they believed in straight lines because the church was promoting the idea of straight lines. You just tap on right below there. There's, yep. Download. No, just go to the center of the page and right above that. And you see initial public draft, just tap on it. And if you go to page 64, on the right side of the page, right there, on the left side of the page, you see the five platonic solids. Mm. Now these, all of our axioms, all of our postulates, have been built off of these things. This is what Euclid went down to, to Egypt and pulled these things together. Pythagoras worked on them. And these were the undisputed fundamentals of God that he used to build. If you tap onto the flower of life, platonic solids things, it's gonna take you to a video, turn it, you know, don't have to turn it. But it'll show you the flower of life that they took this from. But you'll see that instead of following the natural curvature of these 64 circles overlapping, they averaged the space where they, where they met. And they invented straight lines. Mm. Mm-hmm. They in- Why did they do that? Because they believed that the world was flat. Mm. They believed the world flat was flat. Earth theories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... <laughs> This is what we've been telling you, the earth is not flat, the world is not flat, but um, he's just shown it because you can see how easily it is that if you see all those circles, those 64 mm. circles overlapping, they form like what you can see is like a cube, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they took the, the lines, the points between them to form the lines yeah. and make it flat, which yeah. is not. This is what I was saying. Like I think I gave the example on our video when I said if I had a... a, a a pencil with some paper oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I could spin, spin it, it yeah. so you can see how easily it is yeah. where you take something flat but when you spin it it becomes a circle, circle yeah. yeah but let's let's keep going and the church promoted Pythagorean theorem comes off of this cube a squared plus b squared equals c squared. so they wanted to use all of these intertwining circles and create straight lines because that's how they thought Everything came down to mm. straight lines. They thought the world was flat. And I was like, oh, my goodness. They didn't open the flower properly. So the next one would be the icosahedron. Now, the flower of life, it's very, very old. The concept is very old. What, what was the origin of the concept? It's the oldest symbol known to mankind. I, it's believed that it was Anki, the brother of Enlil, if you go by the oh, Sumerian text. Yeah, Sumerian <laughs> text. <laughs> oh, that Anki, that's, that's the new name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's talking about Enki and mm. Enlil, the brother, yeah, Enki, the brother of Enlil. That um, yeah. go on. was the one that created mankind, because if you look at mankind, and there's a point I want to make with it. I want you to stay on the book, go back to page, go to 134 on the book, and this is what that other gentleman being told me to do it. He said, why don't you just take the pieces that make up the flower and put them together based on universal ratios? So, if you, once you're able to pull it up, yep, I know page 134. Like the cur- the like 134 in the book. So, this is the juxtapose of the mistake they made. Yep, just tap right onto that. Yep, just tap on it. Now, this was made by David Johnson, one of our programmers, Argos Fuel. So if you go to the far left and tap on that, this is, I took four of those triangles. Yep, there you go. And, wow, Mm. and you can scroll around. This is what happens when four bubbles meet. This is the negative space where they can't touch each other. 
This is hydrogen, and as I was saying, electricity. This is in the is book. It's in the um, science of creation. creation. Yeah, the master teacher's book, Panda Babylon, yeah, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Malika yeah. Zio, Science of Creation. So that came square. out what ninety mm. something. Yeah. All right, let's keep watching. I'm Get getting more excited as I'm watching. The center <laughs> of that <laughs> triangle, but it gets pushed out, and now you see it has four contractive poles, which is the electric poles. Just go around it from like a, a horizontally, yeah. It has four contractive poles because electricity is seeking a higher pressure condition and forcing it in, where magnetism is seeking a lower pressure condition and spun out. So the vortices, those tips, that's the magnetic field. That's where they begin. But it has an equal attractor and an equal amount of repulsion. So if you go to what happens when eight bubbles meet, they gave me the patents to that. I called that the tetrian. This is... So this is the negative space in between eight bubbles. Eight bubbles. This is the negative space where eight bubbles meet, and you can scroll around. And this is ignored when they're concentrating on straight lines. Completely, because this, if you look from the top, I haven't violated anything. It fits perfectly inside mm -hmm. of there. But this is the negative space where eight bubbles meet, but you'll notice it has eight contractive poles, but it only has six magnetic poles, six vortices, so it has a greater electrical potential than a repulsion. So maybe this is the strong nuclear force and the previous one was the weak nuclear force. So I was like, okay, I caught this the Huntian after my son. So I was like, what happens when six bubbles meet? If it. you go to the it's one good. right in the center. Now you see that it has these huge bubbles, fast moving, but there's six strong spheres that's going around this, but the greater attractor has grabbed the two weaker attractors. And this looks just like a photon, and guess what? It has 30 poles. What is the speed of light? 299, 299,752,400 something. They round it off to 300, 300 million kilometers per second squared. But if you look at it from the top, you'll see that I haven't violated anything. This looks like what happens in nature. So I was like, okay, so they gave me the patents to this, but you'll see that there's six unaccounted electrical poles to it. So I was like, what happens when 12 bubbles meet if you go to the one right next to it? <laughs> Another stable structure that we basically see in nature, but there's four unaccounted electrical poles to it. Four spin around it, you can count those four, you'll see one at the bottom and three on those sides. This is the basis of crystallization, the laws of crystallization mm -hmm. that formed. And you can go to the last one, I was like, what happens when 24 bubbles meet? This is the negative space if you pull to a horizontal on it. You see, you're so in it. <laughs> I was just about to say that. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's two triangles, so two pyramids, one upside down. Mm. And um, yeah, as above, so below. Yeah, but go yeah. on, let's, let's keep going. Me. This is where you cannot distinguish this from the background because all of the electrical potential has been accounted for. This would be the Bose-Einstein condensate where, where something is, becomes indistinguishable from the fabric of space itself, the final state of matter. Something And the proof of this, the platonic solids, they have a thing called discrete symmetry. You can put the cubes together, maybe you can put the dodecahedrons together, but you can't put all of them together. But you can take the wave conjugations right here, and they form super symmetrical systems where everything aligns. So there's a, a site that, that James sent over to you. And you'll, this will be the final thing, and then I'll, I'll be quiet for a second. <laughs> but I, because this is the final, this right here, now these are sculpt, other sculptures I've built. There's a, a video, um, and you'll see that flower. You'll, if you'll pop it up from Terry's linchpins that, that oh, he Oh, yeah, the you, linchpins, yeah. Oh, let me explain it. You'll see, and that, this is one of four super symmetrical systems that I patented. And the reason I patented it was because when Walter Russell put his stuff up, you have to just go down a little bit, 
and we're going to get to grab not that one. We're going to get to gravity in a second. Not that one. We're not even there yet. There, te tetratarian wave conjugations. Now, these are all of those systems put together. Mm -hmm. This is the, where 12 bubbles meet, the Aubreyans. Mm -hmm. And then I put five of them together, and they make these natural starfish. But then when I put 10 of them together, they lay themselves out, and they predict all distribution of matter within the electric field. And you can see where six bubbles meet on the, as you get to a higher point on it, those where six bubbles are meeting, still fitting perfectly wow. where the 12 <laughs> bubbles are meeting and where, this, where the four and where the eight. That's a super symmetrical system. I put 12, uh, if I put 20 of those where six bubbles meet, the Antonians, they make a natural dodecahedron that's naturally curved. If I take where the 12 bubbles meet, that's where I made the linchpin from, ultimately from some of those pieces you got right there, that all shape of it. So that was one of the first things, but when Walter Russell came out with his book and he introduced his periodic table, he watched as different people went up and collected Nobel Prizes for deuterium, for tritium, for all these things that he had discovered. And I was like, okay, let me wait until the patents are granted before I'll talk about it mm. so that they won't be able to stop it. But what makes more sense? Where they invented straight lines in opening the flower or where you actually take the individual pieces of the flower and put it together based on universal ratios? Which one do you think is how the givers of that knowledge intended for us to use it. Well, it makes sense because you're accounting for the negative space and the straight lines are not. Bingo. Yeah, that it must be something. And so, and then these, these are all physical representations that you've created? Yep. That are all of, the, of those things? Same things. That's the Aubrey right there. How is this received? Like, when oh. you, you talk to people about this? Oh, man, they, they first... Because I didn't show them, I hadn't shown them. I introduced it with, let's talk about our fundamentals are a little bit off. There are no straight lines. Right. So I reached out to Neil deGrasse Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh -huh. I saw him at an event um, uh, up front, you know, at Fox. And he was like, hey, man, yeah, I'd love for you to come on my show, do my radio, do my TV thing. I would love that. I was like, yeah, but let me, I've got something I want to introduce to you. Um, and it was only 36 pages. It was a treatise. And I told him it was controversial. And I sent him over that the 36-page thing that had the wave conjugations in it. But I started it off with 1 times 1 equaling 2. And he went in on my treatise, wrote, redlined everything. He <laughs> attacked that I had immediate, that I had talked about. Walter Russell and Victor Schauberger and John Keeley as, and Tesla as the people that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. He attacked them, but then he started attacking, you know, the one times one equaling two. How did he attack them? Oh, he was, he was, because I asked him, I said, it, I said, under what conditions? I said, it's illogical where the square root of, num of a number added to itself would equal more than that number squared. But that's what happens with the square root of two. That's what happens with most of the numbers. I was like, how is it that multiplication, if it means to make more and increase a number, how is one times one equaling one part of the multiplication table? Now, I understand that if you're seeing it one time. Right. But we call that once. But the moment that you had that add the times in there, that mm -hmm. multiplicative indicator. That's the function of multiplication. That means there is like, more than it's one. Just, that's what we say. Like it's simple, multiply. Mm. Like they're gonna get more because oh, two yeah. people coming together. Mm. What did they say in the scriptures? That you will know of each other and to multiply, isn't it? Be fruitful yeah, and multiply. multiply yeah, yeah. yeah. How can you be fruitful and multiply if there's no multiplication? Mm. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. So now each equation is supposed to be balanced. You know, that equal sign is supposed to show that there's a balance between these two numbers over here and a balance on this one over here. What happened to the other one in this equation? 
it does not, it didn't equate. And then I took the square root of that number. I took the square root of two. Because all this started in third grade. I was arguing with my teacher <laughs> because we we're talking about the square root of 100. Oh, my God. So your phone? Yeah, that's my um, detox thing. I'm supposed to detox right now. <laughs> he's on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's on point, detox. man. That's what you have to do. Detox on a timer? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, yeah, that's what my, my phone keeps going off because I'll be setting things up. But <laughs> that's how we got to be, man. That's cool. I'm supposed to take this. What is that? <laughs> and <laughs> pure body extract. And um, there's Advanced another one. Advanced daily cellular detox. What's in this? Oh, oh boy. I and get this too. <laughs> What's in this stuff? Just things to counteract the natural met the metals that we have mm. in our bodies that that wear us out. <laughs> and you just yeah. take these periodically yeah, I, throughout the day on a yeah, timer? Yeah, I, I gotta do it now. I gotta do it Okay. Now. I take a dropper, part of that dropper, and then four sprays, and it, it removes the parasites from your system. Like Again, oil and oregano. Didn't like we not talk about this on one of our shows? Using, um, yeah, you got, you got to get rid of those parasites, you know, and then flush them out. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah like someone co-signing what we've been teaching. This is good. Antibiotics. And have you felt an effect? Yes. Yeah? What do you feel when you take this Well, I used to have really thick, dark circles under my eyes. Mm. That's gone away in the last six months I've been using that. My skin, I'm 55 years old. Yeah, I'm 55 good. years old and I smoke. Well, in Einstein, Do I look like I'm that doesn't, no, sound, that doesn't no, sound like you're. You think that's not very good think, move. Well, I'm a show what did Fox say about that? Like. Genius. Genius, <laughs> not a genius. <laughs> Stop smoking, bro. And I don't know if you could. <laughs> she'd be mad if I threw this up, but she's, 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 she's a beautiful one. But um, this is what I looked like when my wife met me. I was 256 pounds. Were you eating differently? Um, I was, well, now I'm intermittent fasting. I follow her routine. But she turned me from that into this. It's like she shined up. Yeah, you look there. about 15 years younger. Now. Yeah, and that's because of her. I still smoke my cigarettes. <laughs> Why do you do that? I'm a crackhead. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody on, has to have some don't advice. Do like that, bro. Said, you got to have some, some, some balance, sense of humor and, 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 and rascality to you. We have a fan in here, by the way. If you want to smoke yeah, in here, no, you're more than welcome to. I don't trust people You know, that walk around. Oh, I'm just... People get so offended it's by so gurus pious. a lot mm. of times and yogis because they think they're these calm and passive people. And when they get angry, they're like, oh, that, that, was, uh, that was a directed anger. That was, that was a purposeful <laughs> yeah, anger true. to, to wake you up to something. They fr and then they find out they have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> they find out that they smoke and they're like, oh, Vices. this is a lie. Right. But that's the real person. That's what I loved about Alan Watts. He mm. had a wife and he had, and he had his mistresses. He ended up dying with his, one of his, his girlfriend and his wife, you know, off in, in his little place. But he spoke the truth. He was honest. Life is about the give and take. There's a balance True in balance. there, mm. you know. To be human is to be flawed. It's to be beautiful. Yeah, it's part of the beauty of us. And it's part of the cre why we create. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't I don't know about I don't I don't know about supporting that, but yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, his yeah. thing, isn't it? But like, I'm not gonna promote putting smoke and uh, into your lungs when you're dealing with purity and yeah. all that. But yeah, that's his thing. We're not here to judge people, mm. innit? so place of enlightenment. I think part of the chaos of being a human being is <laughs> the beauty of the creation. It's why why we create. The most fucked up people, the best artists, are some of the most up people <laughs> my favorite musicians my mm -hmm. favorite comedians my favorite actors yeah almost all of them up yeah my uncle used to call it he said if 
you you don't get any flower to grow unless you throw some shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Neil deGrasse Tyson and his critique of so Tesla. So he threw shit on, on manure. He manure. was like, well, Tesla, Tesla stuff worked, but Tesla was never really respected and out there. And he wanted, I guess, he wanted me to support Bohr or Schringer or, or Feynman or any of those people. And I'm looking at the Feynman diagrams. I'm like, you made all these things up. You've got, you're basically doing the Mr. Spock thing. If you want to find the answer to something, mm -hmm. then you cancel out all the possibilities, all other possibilities, and you root it down to one thing. So that means going through the whole universe to answer one question. And that's the problem with probability. That's the problem with, with uh, Heisenberg uncertainty, um, uncertainty. That's the problem with Schrodinger. All of those were just these probabilities because they had taken the ether out. They forgot the electromagnetic wave. Mm -hmm. It had to have a medium in which it followed on. It had to have something in which it was moving on. They don't exist in isolation. No, they do not. And it, it cannot be the cause of its own action. Mm. An effect can never be the cause of the action. Mm. The, the chicken cannot come be the egg cannot be come before the chicken. The chicken has to be there first in order to lay it. It has to mate. And what Einstein Hold left on. out. What? A minute. He just said, this is what I love about mm. Pana Babylon, right? Mm. This is a riddle that most people try to solve. Mm. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Now, Terence just said it had to be the chicken to lay to the lay egg. egg yeah. But the chicken comes out of the egg. Mm, so it. then the egg would have had to be there yeah, yeah. for the chicken, chicken to come out. Yep. Now, no one was able to answer this until I came across Panda Babianun's mm. answer to it. And his answer made perfect sense, which is when you're in a bubble where you're only looking at one possibility, it's like you're not thinking outside of that. So most people think that it has to be a choice between those two things. You see, so that means you can't think of anything yeah. outside of that. But the master teacher, Panda Babianun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, said that's the problem because the chicken comes from the dinosaur, dinosaur yeah. and the dinosaur pre-existed. Mm. So it's not, it doesn't make sense when you say what came first, the chicken or the egg, mm. when the chicken itself comes from the dinosaur. dinosaur yeah. And you look at a chicken, look at its structure, look at its feet, look at, it's just a miniature version. Mm. Like he says the same thing with dogs, right? Dogs are always trying to tell you what they are. And they, they say, woof, woof. <laughs> They're telling you they're a wolf, <laughs> a wolf, <laughs> yeah? And you go and look at the genetics and everything, that's, yep. that's where they come from. Dogs are... Canine. Canine, wolves. <laughs> so it's about, can you go outside what they call the box? Mm. Yeah, so that, that's interesting. But let's keep going. It's the equal and opposite of magnetism. So when he, back to Neil deGrasse, when he wrote his response to my paper, and he said, if you have any other questions, you're gonna to have to see somebody else, and he wouldn't take my calls anymore. I was like, okay, so I wrote wow. the book based off of those responses, and I reached out to another guy, um, Dr. David Tong. That would be very, very interesting that that would be his take as a public educator, that he wouldn't wanna to talk to you anymore. The reason I wanted to talk to him was because of his show, The Cosmos, that he mm -hmm. was doing after, after that incredible guy, you know, Carl Sagan did. Mm -hmm. The very first episode he had was talking about um, Giordano Bruno. Mm -hmm. And he said that Giordano Bruno was looking for that grand unified field equation and maybe one day somebody is going to do it. And when they do it, it's going to change the world. And I'm like, dude, I've done it. I've, I've, I've got it here. <laughs> and you don't want to know. Mm -hmm. He attacked it so with such vitriol that I, I was like, oh, okay. Maybe I need to walk away from this. Dr. David Tong, from Cambridge, a professor at Cambridge, did a video on, on, on physics of the world, and he said it's all a lie. And he explained that there was these 16 fields, you know, that they, everything that they had taught was this, and they gave the best understanding and interpretation that they had of it. But it was all a lie because they didn't understand how it worked. Why? Because the Michelson-Morley experiment from 1887 where they were trying to define the ether or the earth in this etheric space, 
problem was they kept with Newtonian laws, so they thought the ether didn't move. They thought it was still. But there was another guy, Larmor, that did it in um, early 1800s, and he went off of Thomas Young, who influenced the Fresnel lens, came, you know, influenced Fresnel, came up with the Fresnel lens. But he talked about a, a moving ether that had opposing vortices. Mm. So I didn't learn all of this stuff until I was getting ready to have conversations with people because I was looking, where has this work been done? But if you look at, at um, Giordano Bruno's work, it looks a lot like my stuff but he still had straight lines, and I think he put those straight lines in there to appease the church. Wow. 1599, hung him upside down in a stake and set him on fire because he refused to recant that the God that they were talking about You have to pause that. You have to pause not that. The see, you see, this is so touching because when you come with something new that people don't know and they don't understand it, like he just explained, mm. they wanted to... They used to kill people, hang them. Mm. And so you can retract what you're saying. This is what they've done with Dr. York. Yeah. They've asked him to re basically retract what he's been putting out and teaching. This is one of the things that was offered to him and he, he would be released. And he said, nah, truth is truth. It's mm. going gonna, gonna <laughs> to stick to the truth. And it's sad that when you're trying to change the world for better that, you know, some of these principalities in higher places will do that kind of thing where to suppress it. Tesla, the same thing. You know, many people that try to give us things like electricity should be free. Yeah. But because they want to make money and make people pay bills, you know. Control, yeah. Control. So, yeah, that's, that's important that we cannot progress as a race, as humanity, if we suppress those that come with ways to help us mm. move forward. God of the universe, it was much larger than that. Their story went back 6,000 years, and there's other traditions and, and tribes around the world where their stories go back 200,000 years. See? <laughs> mm. I mean, and it's like, yeah, it's like he's, he's reading our books. He's reading our definitely. books. Definitely. Especially, like, pick up our book, because we talk about all of this in there as well. And, um, yeah, 6,000 years, he keeps mentioning that, because this is how far back the Adamites go. But like he's just mentioned, there are other, you know, um, civilizations, the Mayans, the uh, Zoo Aztecs, the, the Dogon, the ancient mm. Egyptian, the Sumerians, yeah, yeah. even the Chinese. You know, mm. there's so many people that go back with a culture and information about things way beyond that. So, yeah, what you're saying is real. Made a lot more sense. So how have we limited ourselves you take noah having three sons shem jepheth and, and ham and one was black one was asian and one was white <laughs> does that make sense to you <laughs> that well, doesn't we, make we, any we, sense we, we, at we all. subscribe to that mm, we ascribe right. to that dogma and everybody's entitled to whatever opinion they want to have I don't think that opinion is right. We're going off in so many different directions. But I, I do want to talk it. about this. I do, yeah, I do but, but this, this. this is also something we broke down many, many, many years ago by way of Dr. Malachi Z. York's books, that there's no way all the races can come out of this. Like, two people have three children, triplets, mm. and one comes out black, one comes out white, and one comes out Asian. That's, that's not scientific fact. So he's just, yeah, he's just explaining that which is that whole story with Noah. But yeah, let's keep going. Different blood I would love to know well. mm. yeah, <laughs> DNA. Your, uh, mm. what you believe happened. But the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing is so confusing to me that he, so he was critical of Tesla. He was critical of Tesla. He was critical of Walter Russell and he was critical of John Keeley. Are the, this, not, this is not his field of study though, right? No, he's astrophysicist. He's an astrophysicist, right. but Walter Russell talked about that the earth Walter Russell talked about the fact that the sun gave birth to the earth, that it didn't coalesce from some field. And the oh, this, proof is, of this, this is amazing. Do you guys know that the earth is drifting away from the sun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, slightly. At, at, this is the mistake I made at, at the Oxford, because uh, they, they wouldn't allow me to bring my notes or anything. So I said the drift was, the drift was six inches a year. It's 0. 0.6 inches a year. Mm -hmm. So if you add up how long it would take the earth to move, because in all of the planets, in every solar system is drifting away from their primary at the same exact rate. 
like 1.5 centimeters. So this is a universal expansion that's happening mm. with everything moving away. So them saying the, and the Webb telescope have proven that those galaxies couldn't have formed right. 13, 14 billion years ago. But the if Webb, you, you know that that's the James Webb. Just um, add up yeah, it. Okay. The James Webb t telescope that is the most advanced one at the moment where they can look back into, you know, yeah. so the solar system, the universe yeah. and see. How long it would take the Earth to go from the sun to 93 million miles away it's nine oh, trillion. He's just said that. Exactly. <laughs> this is too much. This is too much. Anyway, go back and watch all our OSM vision yeah. videos because we've been covering this and there's nothing he has said so far that's not in alignment with what we've been teaching. So it's just good to see someone else who, as far as I know, he's not he's claiming to yeah. be a Noapian yeah, or that no. he's read any of our books, but He's saying the exact same thing. Yeah. This is a lot, you know, you have to take it in in small mm. doses. I think we may have to like pause, go and get a cup of tea or something yeah, and then yeah, carry yeah, on with back. a few more yeah, parts yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I know for most people, I ain't going to lie, there was a point where I was, I kind of nodded off a little bit because mm. it's too, it's a lot of science, it's a lot of information and people are used to scrolling on TikTok and all these like social media, like 30 seconds. So to sit down and take in this type of content with this type of science, mm. yeah, you got to, pace yourself and really digest it so yeah man that that is amazing um i i've been you know i mean pushing terence's work for a long time so it's good to see that this new video's come out and um yeah it's it's, it's great anything else you want to say yeah come down the shop pick up man from planet risk you are science. <laughs> come and get all the books get, yeah, all, the get, books. get all the books it's all in there this is tying into what he's and come what, and speak to us yeah, yeah. it's tying into what he's, he's I, 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 I can't wait actually mm. i want to like yeah may, maybe go meet him and mm. have a dialogue and That'd talk to him yeah. come 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 over here or yeah, do yeah. like a podcast. Like, all right podcast. Yeah, cool definitely.